America, 1856. A land of booming industry, a nation divided on the brink of civil war. But for Elizabeth Packard, a young woman brimming with intellectual curiosity, the battle was far more personal. This is the story of a woman who dared to defy the stifling confines of her time. A fight for her sanity, her freedom, and ultimately, the rights of all women. Elizabeth Parsons Ware was born in 1816 in Massachusetts. Elizabeth was a breath of fresh air in a world that expected women to be docile and domestic. Education was a privilege reserved for men, but Elizabeth prayed for knowledge. The ideal woman in the 19th century was the picture of domesticity. Their primary focus was on the home and raising children. Education for women was actively discouraged, seen as a threat to the established male order. But Elizabeth wouldn't be confined. She devoured books on a range of subjects, engaged in stimulating discussions, and even wrote for publications, advocating for the abolition of slavery. In 1840, she married Arthur Packard, a widower with three children. Arthur, a lawyer and a devout Christian, initially seemed to support Elizabeth's intellectual pursuits. However, beneath Arthur's initially supportive facade, lurked a controlling nature. As their lives intertwined, Elizabeth's independent spirit clashed with his need for dominance. Elizabeth once wrote in her letter, As their disagreements grew, Arthur became increasingly restrictive. He limited Elizabeth's social activities, criticized her writing, and even forbade her from continuing her involvement in abolitionist causes. Frustrated and isolated, Elizabeth began to express her unhappiness. This, in Arthur's eyes, was not a cry for help, but confirmation of her madness. Back then, Descent from a woman, especially a wife, was easily dismissed as hysteria or insanity. It was a convenient way to silence women and maintain control over their lives. In 1860, with the help of a doctor willing to turn a blind eye for a fee, Arthur had Elizabeth committed to the Jacksonville Insane Asylum in Illinois. The Jacksonville Asylum was a place far more horrifying than Elizabeth could have ever imagined. Patients were subjected to brutal treatments in the name of curing their supposed mental illnesses. These treatments included forced cold baths, physical restraints, and even the ingestion of nauseating and dangerous substances. But Elizabeth, with her unwavering spirit, refused to break. She kept meticulous notes documenting the horrific conditions and the plight of other wrongly committed patients. These notes became a powerful weapon in her fight for justice. Elizabeth once wrote, In 1862, after two harrowing years, Elizabeth managed to escape the asylum with the help of sympathetic friends. But regaining her freedom was only the first step. Elizabeth wouldn't rest until she exposed the barbaric practices that had imprisoned her and countless others. Fueled by her ordeal, Elizabeth penned a scathing expose titled The Great Abduction. This book became a cornerstone of the asylum reform movement detailing the horrific conditions she endured and advocating for fairer treatment of the mentally ill. Elizabeth's book was a bombshell. It ignited public outrage and sparked a debate about the legitimacy of asylums and the treatments of mental illness. Her work directly contributed to changes in commitment laws, requiring a thorough medical evaluation before someone could be involuntarily confined. 
Elizabeth didn't stop there. She became a tireless advocate for reform, traveling the country and lecturing on the abuses of the asylum system. She joined forces with other women's rights activists, recognizing the connection between the societal control exerted over women and the ease with which they could be deemed insane. Elizabeth's fight for sanity and justice extended far beyond her own personal case. Her story resonated with countless women who felt silenced and controlled by their husbands and society. Elizabeth became a symbol for the growing women's rights movement. Her courage in defying societal expectations and fighting for her voice inspired others to do the same. Elizabeth Packard died in 1890, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire. Though often forgotten by history, her story serves as a powerful reminder of the fight for women's rights and the dangers of silencing dissent. The woman they could not silence is not just Elizabeth Packard's story. It's a story that continues today, a call to challenge injustice and fight for a world where all voices are heard, regardless of gender or mental health status. Mm -hmm.